All right, now another type of disturbance we can put in is to change the volume. That's another application of Le Chatelet's principle. Now, when you change the volume, again, in a sense, we're going to look at this in kind of a rough colloquial way of looking at it. Um, there's less space, and the, um, there's going to be more crowding. So change, um, changing the volume, well, that might increase or decrease the crowding. So let's say that we decrease the volume. That would tend to have more crowding. Nature will try to undo that then by reducing the amount of crowding. All right. Now, the crowding depends, let's just focus on gases, but what is it that takes up the most space? Which phase takes up the most space? Which one? Which phase takes up the most space? If you have, say, a kilogram of water, would it take up the most space as ice, as water, or as water vapor? So actually, yeah, don't gases expand to fill all the available space? Also, you make a gas by heating something. Well, things expand when they get heated. So those are two ways to see that things generally are going to take up more space as gases than in any other phase. Gases take up more room than anything else. It's hard, maybe a little hard to think of that because gases also are very willing to share that room with other things. Um, but gases take up a lot of space. So when we're changing the volume, all that we really matters is the amount of uh, gas that we're dealing with. So we can measure the number of moles of gas. So when you decrease the volume, do you think that nature would want to increase or decrease the number of moles of gas? Decrease the number of moles. Yeah. Decreasing the volume tends to increase crowding. And we can relieve that crowding by decreasing the number of moles of gas. So which way should this equation shift to decrease the number of moles of gas? To the right forward? Yeah. Every time we go forward, how many moles of gas do we use up? Four. Four. And how many do we replace that with? Two. Two. So we're losing two moles of gas every time this reaction goes forward. So it looks like you already figured out the technique here, which is to count the number of moles of gas on each side. This is one more reason to label the phases. You just add the stoichiometric coefficients. We just add the stoichiometric coefficients to figure out how many moles of gas are being used up on the left and how many are being produced on the right. So when you decrease the volume, the reaction shifts to decrease the number of moles of gas, which we can judge using the stoichiometric coefficients. Um, this version, we're not going to try to prove like we did the last one, but it kind of makes sense that nature is trying to undo this disturbance. Okay. So um, if we decrease the volume, which way would this reaction shift? Uh, the reverse. Forward. Which one? Oh, I'm sorry. If we decrease the volume, would this reaction shift forward or reverse? Oh, forward. Yeah, because that decreases the number of moles of gas. Another reaction might shift reverse, but this one wants to shift forward to reduce the number of moles. So if we increase the volume, which way should we shift? Reverse. Now, there's plenty of room. Now there's less crowding, and nature wants to get back to the, uh, say, get back to the original amount of crowding. Nature wants to undo any disturbance. So it's not like nature is against crowding in general, in our little analogy. It just has a certain set natural amount of crowding that it always wants, tries to get back to, roughly speaking. So now we've decreased the crowding, and nature tries to get back to where it started by increasing the number of moles of gas. which in this case would mean shifting in reverse. Because that would replace two moles with four moles. So we're increasing the number of moles of gas. All right, so that's Le Chatelet's principle for volume. So now we've learned two different Le Chatelet's principles. We learned Le Chatelet's principle for concentrations and changing concentrations or changing partial pressures. And now we've learned Le Chatelet's principle for changing volumes. What if there were um, other phases here, like solid or liquid? Well, for the most part, you would ignore them, because gas takes up way more space. So you just count how many moles of gas there are on both sides, and you ignore the other phases. What if there were equal amounts? 
uh, moles of gas on both sides. Well, then when you change the volume, nature won't respond because there's no way to change. Uh, to, uh, uh, if, you in if you increase the crowding, nature has no way to decrease the crowding in that case. So there is no, um, so if you, if you decrease the volume and there's the same number of moles of gas on both sides, um, the reaction won't shift. And it'll just stay where it is. So those are all cases that can come up. The third thing that we can change is the temperature. Um, now, what happens here depends on whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. I don't know whether this reaction is endothermic or exothermic, so I'll just make something up. Let's suppose this is an endothermic reaction. suppose this is an endothermic reaction. Now we're going to use a trick. We're going to treat heat as if it was a starting material or a product. Right. Well, if this is an endothermic reaction, should we treat heat as a starting material or as a product? Starting. Yeah. Because endothermic means we have to put heat in in order for this reaction to work. It's using up heat. Mm -hmm. So it should also make sense that if this was exothermic, heat would be a product. It would be producing heat. So it's really a really idea, good idea now to physically write down heat on, one, on the appropriate side of the equation. Now let's say that we increase the temperature. Is that kind of like adding heat or removing heat? It's kind of like uh, adding heat. Yeah, it's like adding heat. So how would nature undo that here, shifting forward or reverse? This is like we've added more heat. Well, we should shift forward to use up that heat. All right, we're, we're talking again kind of roughly because temperature and heat are not the same exact thing. But this is a way to think about it that will give us the right answer and gives us a basic intuition for what's happening. So this is good enough. This is the standard way that the Chatelet's principle is considered here in an introductory course. So if we increase the temperature, we should shift forward. And again, this version of the Chatelet's principle we're not going to try to prove. We'll just kind of learn it. So if we decrease the temperature, which way would this reaction shift? But that's only because it was endothermic. We would get different answers if it was exothermic. And the best way, to best way to make sure you can get the right answer is to write heat down as either a starting material or a product. And then we can kind of treat the, uh, this as if it was a change in concentration type problem. 